So if you don't remember what we did in the previous episode, we created a URL generator that was able to produce the URL that Adidas uses. Uh, now this URL didn't take any shoe sizes that were currently available, it didn't take any of that into account. Uh, it pretty much just made the URL, it didn't even see if it was correct. Uh, so in this episode we're going to be building upon that to see what sizes are currently in stock and how to view that uh, without you know going to the website and that kind of thing. So what I'm doing right here is I'm pretty much making that URL generator we made in the previous program into a function that we can call from within the program. So to do this I just removed the uh, inputs where you add text and I also removed the print function. So this is basically just going to create a URL that can be used in the in the program and so like another function can call that or I can call it from outside of the program. So I can import shoebot and then do a shoebot.url gen and then type in the information and it will return the URL. So then we're just going to open up an interactive shell. We're going to import shoebot requests. Uh, we're going to import beautiful soup for random and then uh, finally web browser. So I like to use the interactive shell when it comes to web scraping because you can kind of tell uh, what you're grabbing instantaneously. And then if you haven't uh, grabbed the extensions that are in the description below, you're going to want to download Selector Gadget, which is a Chrome extension to find CSS elements. And then right here I'm just selecting the area on the web page where it stores the shoe size information. And then I'm deselecting anything that I don't want the program to grab. And then you should be left with a CSS selector that's able to grab the shoe size information from the page. I'm just going to copy this to use uh, later on in the video. And then you want to copy the uh, set of code that's in the description into your Python interactive shell. Uh, this is just a fake header. I'll get into this a little bit later on in another video. Uh, and then you're going to want to copy a URL. So this can be any Adidas URL. You don't have to use the one that I'm using. Just happen to have this one saved. But this is going to be the initial URL that we'll be scraping uh, to find the current shoes sizes that are in stock. And then we're going to use the request module to pull that URL and we're going to use the fake headers that I have in the description and we're going to call the result of that function res. And then after it pulls that page, we're then going to use the beautiful soup module to uh, convert that into something that we can pull information from. So we're going to call that page. And then I'm going to confirm that it actually grabbed the right website by pulling the title of the page. So you can see that this is correct and it did pull the correct page. So now we're going to go back to that CSS element that we grabbed early on in the video. We're going to pull that CSS element from the page and we're going to call that result list of sizes raw. I'm going to ignore that span portion of the CSS selector. So we're only going to be selecting a size drop down block. Then we're going to use the getText function to convert the HTML that Beautiful Soup grabbed into something that we can read. You can see that this is a bunch of new tabs and new line characters with the sizes in between. Uh, so you can see a dash N is actually a new line while a dash T is a tab. So I feel like the best way to get rid of these dash t's and dash n's is to convert that get text into a string and then replace the dash t's with nothing. So basically deleting them from the string. So you can see that it made it a little bit more readable. So now every time two dash n's show up in the string, we're going to replace it with a space. Now this creates a string that is much more readable, but most importantly, it can be split apart into a list using the split function. So now we have a list called sizes that returns every size that's currently in stock for the URL that we put into the program. Uh, so now I'm just going to remove any strings that I don't want in the sizes list. Uh, so in this case, it's select and size. We're just going to remove those. So now we have a list that only consists of the current sizes that are in stock. So now I'm just going to do a simple for loop that's going to print out whatever sizes are in stock and then we'll be able to implement this into a larger program without using the interactive shell. So you can see that that worked pretty well. So now what we're going to do is convert everything we did from the interactive shell into a Python program. So 
So I'm going to start by creating a function called check sizes, and then I'm going to import all of the programs that we used in the interactive shell. So in the actual program, I'm going to call the result of the request get function raw HTML. And once again, you're going to want to add that set of code that I have in the description to the program itself. We're going to wind up changing that again later on in the video series. But just for now, it's an easy way to get around uh, their block from requests that are made from a Python program that doesn't use fake headers. Then we're going to convert that raw HTML result into beautiful soup4, and we're going to call that page. And once again, these are the same exact functions that we did in the interactive shell. I'm just converting the variable names into something that's more readable if I were to go edit it later on. Then I'm going to create a list called list of raw sizes. That's going to be the beautiful soup selection of that CSS element that we found early on in the video. Since list of sizes raw is a variable in both the interactive shell and the actual program, we can pretty much just start copying and pasting things that we did earlier. We're going to remove all of the tabs and then replace every two new lines, we're going to replace it with a space and then we're going to split it using the split function. So now it's doing pretty much the same exact things it did earlier, where it's removing select and size from the list of sizes. And then just like in the interactive shell, I'm going to create a for loop that prints out the current sizes that are available for any shoe size that you input into this check stock function. I should have done this early on in the video, but I'm also going to add model to the variables that check stock uses. And this is going to print out the model, and then the word size, and then whatever sizes are available. And that should be the end of the check stock function. And now we're going to create a function called main, and this is going to be our primary bot or primary program. And this is going to be the function that we'll be building off of. So this is what we'll be calling from the command line when we run the shoebot program. The only two variables that this is really going to need is the model and size information, but we may eventually add more. So to start off, it's going to create the URL using the URL gen program. And then it's going to call the check stock function, which will print the current sizes that are in stock. So now we're just going to check to see if it works properly. So open up a Python shell, import shoebot. And then you can see right here that I called the main function incorrectly. I should have specified that it was within the shoebot program. So this is going to throw an error. And then you can see right here that I realized that error, um, and then it throws another error where I wrote a variable name incorrectly. So I'm going to fix that and try one more time. And it should return a list of the current sizes that are in stock. Now keep in mind that the only reason we're inputting a uh, size in here at this point in time is to generate the URL, but we'll also be using this same program later on in the video series, and later on we'll have it so that it tells you if the current size that you're looking to buy is in stock, or it's going to, you know, automatically buy that size. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions. In the next video, I'll be going over proxies and fake headers. A lot of websites will block requests that come from a program, so we're going to go over that, and then we'll talk about purchasing the shoes. Stay tuned. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you guys think.